Have you any tips for how to work with resentment? I know I shouldn't hold on to it. It's probably causing me problems while the person I resent is fine. Still hard to let it go though. So resentment is a very strong emotion. Whenever we're harboring a feeling, particularly for another person, it can be particularly challenging. And I think one of the reasons why strong, uncomfortable emotions aimed at other people are particularly strong is because when it comes to a bad experience that we have, you know, a bad weather event or something external that happens in the world that wasn't caused by a person, very often we apply less agency to it. In other words, we, with a person, feel the need to be particularly conscious and be particularly on our guard because that person has intent and they might do it again and they might be holding a grudge and they might be out to get us in some shape or form. When it comes to a weather event or something, we tend to assume, well, you know, it's just a one-off. And even if it's going to happen again, there might be warning signs beforehand. And I don't need to worry about the weather kind of plotting to get me in any shape or form. But with people, we have, through thousands of years of our development, uh, developed, I suppose, facilities to be a little bit paranoid and sometimes justifiably. You know, because sometimes there are real risks out there, so it can be useful at times. Of course, we can overdo it sometimes as well, so it's striking that balance, which is key. So it's in that context, I think, that feelings like resentment can be particularly problematic. Because when the emotion comes up, it sort of seems valid. It seems justifiable in some shape or form. We think, well, of course, I resent that person because of what they've done. I have to protect myself in some shape or form. So that already is a clue because when self-protective uh, feelings are particularly strong, usually they're particularly strong because our feeling is that our sense of self is being challenged in that moment. So that could be a lack of self-esteem. So that's uh, uh, something that we need to look at. That's a topic area that's worth considering. Does our self-esteem need boosting? Or of course, we could be completely right because if we are actually in a, in a threat situation, well then we do need to be careful and we need to get protection or we need to leave the situation or we do whatever we need to do. But when there's a feeling of resentment there, often what's happening is this is in a situation where maybe we're not in imminent danger, but we're just holding on to the experience to some degree. Some of that emotion is being carried over time bias and that can definitely be unfortunate because very often as the question says the person that we resent maybe isn't being particularly affected by that but we are you know so we're carrying the weight of that resentment that strong negative or uncomfortable emotion around with us and that then is weighing us down you know at best it's just affecting our our time, our productivity, our energy levels. But sometimes it's even going worse than that. You know, it's building up into a ball of something that really is affecting how we feel within ourselves and affecting many things that we might do in the future moving forward. So what to do with it? Acceptance is a really good starting point. Now you might interject at this point and say, acceptance, no way, I don't accept it, I don't like it at all. But you got to remember that acceptance does not mean signing off in it. It doesn't mean leaving it there as a feeling. It just means recognizing that this is happening. That's well, an acknowledgement of sorts. Okay, there is a feeling of resentment there for right or for wrong. Here's what's going on. And just taking a moment to be with that is very powerful. Like the example of the captain of the ship at sea. It doesn't mean that you're just accepting that there's a storm and just sitting there, you're still going to do something about it. But accepting that there is a storm is a very good starting point. Because if you don't, you're not really going to be able to understand what's happening to move beyond it and to work with it to some degree. So that approach of acceptance, I think, is a really useful starting point. Now, if you are challenged by acceptance, allow me to challenge you one step further. Uh, forgiveness. Oh. That's the F word that a lot of people don't like to hear when it comes to uncomfortable interpersonal emotions. But forgiveness is absolutely key. But there's a disclaimer with forgiveness. 
it's often misunderstood, I think, or to be fair, there are just different definitions of it out there that people use. So let's be clear when I'm talking about uh, forgiveness here, what I'm not talking about is just saying what that person did was okay, or even necessarily saying what you were in the wrong. What I'm talking about is kind of contextualizing a person's actions in a way that gives you a bit more room and a bit more space to be able to interpret them. So a simple way of thinking of it is this. Why would the person act that way to begin with? Assuming, you know, because if we're in the wrong, we need to recognize that too, of course, or if we're partially in the wrong, it's worth recognizing that and learning from it. That's very valuable. You know, there's no, you're not putting yourself down by recognizing patterns that you could improve. But assuming you've done that and assuming to at least some extent you're not in the wrong, you know, because sometimes the other person might be acting from a rather malicious place. That happens, unfortunately, in life. But the question is, why are they acting that way? And the question is, how many people from a very calm, well-adjusted, peaceful place within themselves choose to be cruel in a consensual and deliberate way? It, it just doesn't work that way, does it? Why would you? Usually lashing out with strong responses, strong emotions comes from a place of suffering within herself anyway. And so then we got to ask the question, well, hold on a moment. How did the person get in that position? Was it something we did to them? If so, let's remedy that. Again, it doesn't mean they were right. They need to do some work too, potentially. But, you know, let's remedy that if we were responsible for that, intentionally or not. However often it may not be us, we might just remind them of somebody or we might be the straw that breaks the camel's back on that particular day because there's a lot of other stuff going on. And this can go back in time, back in history. The, the, the way the, the parents treated them, the way they were raised, experiences they've had with other people in their life, previous relationships, etc. So the point is there's always a story. Now you don't necessarily know what that story is and you may never know what that story is. And sometimes it's not even worth spending too much time trying to figure it out because the person themselves might not understand it. You can't go and do another person's therapy for them in too much depth. You know, you might want to posit a few ideas if you find that helpful, but ultimately it's a deep question. But you can feel pretty satisfied in understanding that there is a reason. And there's something very powerful about being able to then see some of the interpersonal tension that was there between you and them, but to maybe zoom out and see it through the lens of what that person's prior experience is. You know, what minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades of experience have they had? What challenging moments have they had right back to when they were maybe a young child? just made them interpret the world a certain way, made them speak a certain way. Maybe they were hurt and they found that attack was a form of defense for them. That's very unfortunate and it certainly isn't your fault and you may need to do something about that. But what you can hopefully do is give it a bit of space, a bit of context, a bit of breathing room. And that matters. Because when you give yourself that space, this is not about inaction. It's not that the idea here is not to do anything and just sit there taking it if it's a, an inappropriate exchange. But it's to give yourself the room to be able to see it with a little bit more breathing room and to be able to see it in context. And, you know, good, a good police officer does this really well. You know, somebody shouting at them. But what that person should have, if they're a good officer, is a sense of empathy in that moment. The more abusive the person is, the more that officer is saying, why could this be the case? This person's just meeting me for the first time. Why could this be the case? Have they had bad experiences with the police before? So that, that this makes this understandable. And how can we improve that in the world? Have they had other challenging relationships in their life regarding authority or law and order or with other people? If so, let's actually understand that. Now, again, that doesn't mean that they don't have to do what they have to do. If somebody's being hurt in that moment, they have to protect the person being hurt, but they can do it with a sense of space and context and understanding. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, you as a, a, a bystander mightn't be trained to that level. You don't need to be. That's absolutely okay. But you can certainly bring some of that space in and you can start to question a bit. Yeah, what is, what is appropriate here? How do I want things to be moving forward? And why is this the way it is to begin with? 
and give yourself a bit of room. It's very powerful sometimes when you do that because what it can do is it can just diffuse a lot of that emotional energy. And you, you can still see what's going on, but you can see the wood for the trees a little bit more clearly. And then you can ask really the all important question, which is, well, where are we going to take this to moving forward? You know, what, what is the best way of actually dealing with the situation? Do I need distance? Or maybe if I have to engage, what's the best way of engaging? And you're going to give it a little bit of breathing room. It's like if you uh, are working with animals, you know, if you have a, a, an animal that unfortunately has had a, a bad past, it's going to be very mistrusting and it is going to lash out sometimes. So that doesn't mean you go in there all guns blazing too, because then you're just going to amp it up. You obviously defend yourself as you need to and use necessary precautions if you have to interact with the animal. But hopefully there can kind of be empathy as well as strength at the same time. And you can say, well, how can we actually bring this forward in a productive way? You know, what's going to be a useful way of doing it? So taking a little bit of time to visualize how you might like the interaction to be. And in certain forms of meditation, there will be these kindness exercises where you just wish well to other people. Wish well to your friends. Wish well to strangers. Wish well to your enemies. That really annoys them. <laughs> but it's good. It's good for the world. It's helpful and well worth practicing. Just giving a little bit of positive energy in that direction, but in a constructive way. You know, this isn't this thing where you go, oh, everything's perfect. No, no, it's not perfect. <laughs> That's the point. If it was perfect, you wouldn't need to bring in this sense of space and ease. It's when there's challenges. That's when that's really needed. So you can address it constructively. If you found this valuable, do like, subscribe and share. And what's your experience? Do you have any questions or topic suggestions? You can contribute in the comments on social media using hashtag BodyMindSelf or on jfl.com.